It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Captain Russ Davies. He's the public information officer for the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. And with him is Deputy Chief Tim Michaels from the Logistics Bureau of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. And in the Logistics Bureau uh, falls the Risk Management Division. We're going to be talking about risk and health and general well-being of fire department personnel. This week's show is part one of a two-part interview. And thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You all, and I don't. this is no surprise to you, have to be concerned um, much more so in your line of duty with health risk. And there are many health risks, physical and behavioral mental health. There's a lot that goes on with firefighting and paramedics. You, for most of us, Hopefully, we don't see a lot of uh, traumatic things happen. Uh, you all see them all the time. We do, um, and we see a wide variety of, of different type of incidents. As you know, we're an all-hazards response department, so we deal with medical emergencies, we deal with traumatic emergencies, we do see a lot of different different things. And fighting fires and or responding to these traumatic accidents, there's PTSD, there's heart, lung, vascular issues, there's cancer, there's uh, anxiety, there's depression. Uh, Deputy Chief Michaels, this is your department, yes? How yes, do you yes, How do you safeguard your personnel? So like most things, what we, tr we try to do is we try to take a preventative approach. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly we know that our folks are going to be exposed to these things. So we try to take actions on the front end to help to reduce the impact of them in their in their lives. So for the cardiovascular stuff, there's a, a focus on physical fitness. Uh, from a behavioral health component, um, we try to provide folks with services to address the issues as they occur. And we've also started a initiative within the department to try to develop what we call resiliency. Mm -hmm. So being able to take care of yourself and prepare yourself to be exposed for things like that. Um, when it comes to one of the other physical risks that we're susceptible to is actually cancers, job-related cancers. We've seen a, an increase in that over the last five years. And we've kind of started tailoring some of our efforts not only to reduce our exposures to carcinogens but early identification of possible cancers so that they can be treated effectively early on does that mean it, uh, reducing your risk to exposure does that mean not fighting the fires no okay no, tell me what not. that means so reducing our risk is that we know what the hazards are mm -hmm. so uh, we have over the course of the years identified some key components. So one of the things, uh, diesel emissions from our apparatus. So we have systems that we call them exhaust recovery systems. So those exhaust recovery systems actually suck the exhaust out of the building uh, to a safe area as opposed to what we used to do is we would just be exposed to them in those apparatus. Just run into the building and fight the fire. So now you're putting up sort of uh, ventilation in. No, this is just for our day-to-day -day operations. So oh, this is in the firehouse. The fire engine sitting in the firehouse. We've all seen trucks on the side of the road that when they accelerate, they, they push out these big black billowy right. exhaust plumes, I will say. And you're starting these trucks in the firehouse where right. you all are living. All of our stations have that. Okay, so how do you reduce the risk when you are running into a burning building? So what we've done is we we focus more. It used to be that we would just kind of go in, fight the fire, and then we would put our stuff in the apparatus. We'd go back to the fire station, and it was just kind of a normal thing. So what we've recognized is that by being in that environment, we're exposed to certain contaminants. So what we do is we try to actually decon ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we do, uh, we, as they come out, we try to, they do go in, fight the fire, do everything that they need to do. But when they come out we focus on washing them down, essentially, which we call a gross decon. Mm -hmm. and the person and the, and what they were wearing. The, the equipment okay. that they were wearing. And then after they're done with that equipment, we take and we actually wash our turnout gear now, which was 
kind of unheard of years ago. Uh, and then we also have, we exchange equipment on location so that they're, we do our best to get them the cleanest equipment that they can possibly have. So we wear hoods that protect our, our head and our ears. Mm -hmm. um, we have a process where after they come out of the fire, we give them a new hood. Uh, we take the other hood, it's washed, it's cleaned, and then it's put back into circulation so when we have it for future fires. Um, we're also in the process of buying um, our, the, the clothing that we wear that people see us wear on the on the fire ground, we call that PPE or turnout gear. Mm -hmm. um, we're buying. We're in the process of buying two sets of turnout gear for our folks, so that if they get one set that's dirty, they can actually put on a clean set, and it reduces their exposure to those contaminants. I can't. It, it's. It seems like common sense now, but I guess it wasn't all. And it just. It, it's unbelievable to me that you didn't already have two sets. It, it just comes out of out of the fact that. At least over the last five years, it was there was a health trend that was identified, where firefighters were becoming subject to more, um, more job-related, more cancers. Mm -hmm. And then why is that? And then through a variety of national incentives, um, folks started researching it and recognizing that we were being exposed, had a higher risk, and. Then we started developing strategies to be able to, to deal with it once we figured out what those risks were. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole, and I'm in the studio today with Captain Russ Davies. He's the public information officer for the Anne Arundel County Fire Department, and with him is Deputy Chief Tim Michaels, also from the Anne Arundel County Fire Department, Risk Management Division, Logistics Bureau he heads up. You were about to say, Russ. Well, we were just speaking about the gear and how it would have seemed perhaps intuitive there would be two sets of gear. Something to keep in mind is there's been a change in the way things are made, um, furniture, um, so it's more toxic than it used to be. And it's, it's taken a while for science and research to learn that after the turnout gear has been exposed to that, that for a period of time, it'll still continue to carry those contaminants and off gas. Yeah, it's an interesting so, thought. I never, it, we were disposable, everything's disposable now. Yeah, so I mean, even when I started with the department, it was um, not unheard of that you would fight a fire, you would take your turnout pants and take them right back into the bunk, bunk mm -hmm. room with you, so where you're you're walking through the living areas of the fire station. So even in the last 25 years, there's been a, a big change in just how that is, how that, that is viewed. How long have you both been in the business? I've been with the county for 26 years. And I've been with the county for 32. Holy moly, a lot of experience. What did 9-11 teach your industry? Certainly, I think when looking at it from a, a risk management approach, mm -hmm. I mean, there's certainly a lot of the post 9-11 firefighters, especially when you look at the World Trade Center, uh, suffered a lot of respiratory issues and things like that. So that does put our focus on uh, put our focus on respiratory protection, uh, making sure that we're wearing the right. I try not to use all the acronyms there, but the PPE, our protective clothing, mm -hmm. um, and making sure that we're we're really focused on that. And I think I think 9/11 also the the aftermath associated with that started to bring to our attention some of those behavioral health issues that you referenced earlier. And it's interesting we talked we touched on this shortly before, and we will get into the behavioral health. This is uh, part one of a two part interview. Your industry, including the International Association of Firefighters, does refer to something. Most most of us call mental health as behavioral health, and you, your comment about that was? Yeah, my comment was is that um, I think that early on, I think there was a negative stigma associated with referring to things as, as being mental, mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've tried to do is we have tried to be sensitive to that and, and gone with more of a behavioral health, because when you, when you look at it in a broader perspective, there's a lot of things that, that every one of us uh, feel the pressures of day-to-day -day, um, day -day living, plus uh, our folks are exposed to those 
those critical events that you're talking about. So it's it's a it's a process and a focus on managing all of those things uh, to a positive outcome for the health of our folks. So part two of this interview will be mostly dealing with the behavioral health issues slash mental health issues that firefighters and paramedics are dealing with. Paramedics just part of firefighters? Do you, or do you have to separate the two? In our case, all of our paramedics are also cross-trained as firefighters. All of our firefighters, while some of them are paramedics, are at least EMTs. Mm -hmm. So again, we're all hazards. So uh, the same group of people could respond to a medical emergency that could then turn around and, and deal with a vehicle fire, a structure fire, a rescue. So, you know, we pretty much do it all. All right, back to the physical health issues. Cancers, more cancers you're seeing. What does that mean? I think there's more of a focus now on the, like we spoke about earlier, those job-related cancers. We see we see cancers that are focused specifically at firefighters. So uh, there's firefighters seem to be at a higher risk for genital-related can cancers, for throat cancer, uh, lung cancer. We talked a little bit about the the heart disease. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a matter of, and most of those seem to be what we call contacts, contact mm -hmm. cancer. So uh, when you think about it, when you're exposed to something like that and you start to take off, even if you were just to simulate like taking off your own coat, because it really is a coat, it's right. just a different kind of coat. Um, and you, when, you're, when you're taking that coat off, it's covered in soot. Mm -hmm. And that you get those contaminants on your neck and you get those uh, when we put our pants on and off our turnout pants on and off right. those contaminants are in high heat areas underneath our our armpits our groin um, and it makes it easier for those contaminants to to filter into our body system so those cause those those job related cancers and what we try to do is we've tried to as best we can prevent that that contact from happening so if if you go in a fire and you have a contaminant and then you go on the next fire and you reach out and you put your hands and you put your gear back on you're you're exposing yourself just by putting it back on to the contaminants from the other fire um, as part of that i kind of spoke a little about the decon process right so we use um what we we refer to now as rescue wipes um, as our firefighters come out and through their rehab process our rehabilitation process we have a a cycling and when they come out um, you'll see sometimes you see pictures in the newspaper where firefighters are sitting and they're cooling off and they're hot and sweaty that's all part of our what we call our rehab process and during that process they use these wipes which look like giant baby wipes mm -hmm. um, and they they actually wipe their neck and their head and their face off to reduce those hmm. reduce those contaminants that they're exposed to and with the hope that that that's going to prevent job related and cancer. And once they get back to the station, are they showering on top of that? They are. Good. We're going to take another short break when we come back more about uh, safeguarding our firefighters here in Anne Arundel County. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. This is uh, part one of a two-part interview with the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. That includes Captain Russ Davies. He's public information officer for the department and Deputy Chief Tim Michaels with the Logistics Bureau, which includes the Risk Management Division. Okay, we're talking about these diseases, heart, lung, vascular, and cancers. Quite often when we get sick, we don't necessarily know we're sick, and women and men both have this. You put off going to the doctor, uh, even though you're seeing some weird stuff or feeling some weird stuff, and then by the time you go, cancer, a heart issue. Is there training for the firefighters to recognize some of the things that are springing up with firefighters? So we certainly have put out educational information to heighten their awareness about issues that they could potentially be exposed to. I think uh, you bring up a good point. So all of our folks, we refer to them as uh, NFPA physicals, but they get a physical every year mm -hmm. with the idea of identifying those things early on so that we can treat them. That's, that's the most effective thing is to catch things early and then treat them for a right. better outcome for our folks. So all of our folks get a physical every year. Um, the physicals, we focus on those things that we know are a hazard to folks in our occupation. So um, the older you get, you get a stress test uh, to I early identification of cardiac related issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and very recently, we've started adding some uh, tests to identify 
the the cancers that we're we're predisposed to in our profession. We've changed as a society. I think you both are old enough to know, as I remember, the times where we didn't talk about our health issues. Definitely not about our mental health or behavioral health issues. And very rarely would you hear people talking about their physical health issues, not putting it out on Facebook. And now some of us do. With firefighters, which is still mostly a male-dominated world, yes. For the most part. Um, Men don't talk about a lot of this. They never used to. Certainly not behavioral health. Has that changed? I I think we certainly strive to change it Mm -hmm. because um, the more you talk about it, the more you become aware of it, Um, especially, you know, not to get too far off track, but with our, what we refer to as the behavioral health stuff. I think if, if there's if you're talking about it, you realize that you're not isolated mm-hmm. and that it's not just you. And then people start talking about the resources that are available to be able to help to make people better. And that, I think that applies to both sides as far as physical as well as the behavioral health. And we'll talk about one of those resources in the second part of this interview. Number one cause of death to American firefighters. Uh, Russ, you provided me with some information. Uh, cardiac events preventable with early detection and health screenings. Again, this physicals, annual physical assessments to measure fitness levels. Do your physicals uh, also uh, uh, go into mental health? No, they really don't. They're primarily for physical? Just, just for the physical part, just like you would if you were taking a regular physical from your doctor. Russ, department's last five line of duty deaths. You want to go over this? Sure. You know, the our last line of duty death was in 1996. Um, in the 10 years preceding that, we'd had five line of duty deaths. They were all cardiac related. So in, in this department, the recent history going back to 1986 has been, it's it's been hard heart-related issues that cause our line of duty deaths. And it's it's equal across the board between the volunteers and the career. We had um, two volunteer firefighters that had heart attacks in the line of duty, two career firefighters, and then one career firefighter that was also a, a lifetime volunteer member. So um, it's across the career and the volunteer segments of the department. Gender, age, all of it. Correct. Behavioral health, though, again, we're going to get into that in the second part of this interview, which will air next week. Suicide has passed line of duty deaths in the fire in the fire service. It has. Suicides that are attributed to the line of duty have exceeded cardiac, and it's probably a conservative number because the, the belief in the industry is that they're still underreported or not attributed to being related to the line of duty. So you, for 2017, 117 suicides, 98 line of duty deaths. That's a big difference. That's a Yeah, that's a national statistic. Yeah, yeah not yeah. Anne Arundel County. Right, not Anne Arundel County. All right, so we're going to uh, come back to this in the second part of this interview. We're out of time on this one. We will return next week with more about keeping our Anne Arundel County firefighters and paramedics healthy. Thank you both for joining me. Thank Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week.